Hey there, so last night I decided to start trying to have a look at uh, the Mocha testing uh, that you get with Yeoman and combining that with using Require.js and Phantom.js and uh, Expect and Chai and all that stuff. And I ran into an issue, it looks like a number of other people have had. Um, here's on the issue tracker for the Yeoman site. Uh, just recently, PhantomJS is timing out when you do a Yeoman test and Yeoman server test. Our Yeoman, Yeoman server test was working fine for him, but the Yeoman test uh, wasn't working for him. And I ran into this as well. And looking around, it looked like a lot of other people were running into this as well. So once I figured it out, I figured I should go ahead and uh, put up a little repo with what I got working, which I did over here um, on my Rob Levin Tennis uh, GitHub. It's yeoman underscore require JS underscore template. And I'm going to try to <laughs> attempt to do this in real time um, so we can see uh, how to get this done correctly and try to understand the concepts as far as um, how it all fits together. So we'll call this Yeoman Test Require JS and we'll CD into Yeoman Test Require JS and then we'll do a Yeoman init and we're going to say no to everything but the AMD Require JS support. Okay, and we'll open this up and I'm going to cheat and have a working one on the right. Um, but first thing I need to do, and this is just a combination of some of the solutions that were posted in there and also um, some research on my own. This has to point to um, localhost port 3501 index.html. Okay, so that's in the gruntfile.js. The next thing we need to do is we're going to go into this index.html that was generated for us. We're going to take this and we're going to group the mocha.js include and the sorry source and the chai source together. We're going to get rid of all of this um, and we're going to get rid of the runner because we're going to do this with require.js so we want that to be the last thing that kicks off so so this mocha.js in runner it has this mocha run and that's going to kick things off for us so we want to delete this here and um, we'll use this as our script opener and we actually want this line over here this is just sort of a magic combination that worked for me and again, I don't take any credit. I just sort of piece together um, other people's solutions. Although I did find one or two things myself. Pat on the back. Okay. So that looks correct. So now, really important part of using Require.js is, uh, well, obviously we have to include it. So um, scripts vendor require JS and then there's this data main guy um, and that's going to be uh, scripts main and if we look at what um, Yeoman gave us we have a scripts main um, out of the box and it's actually already set up um, as where is it app scripts it's already set up um, for require.js. So we're gonna, we don't need this. We're going to ignore app.js and we're just and we don't even need this shim guy. We'll leave him there though, but we're going to create a lib. And at this point I should talk about the fact that um, Yeoman will put the app directory and the test directory as root when you execute. So my understanding is, because of that, you can say things like um, 
well you can see you can use the this, those types of paths so if I go over here from my test directory um, look at the index includes or sources rather uh, we're, we're pointing to lib well that kind of makes sense because that's relative um, to our current path but uh, scripts vendor how are we getting that well app is is on the path because this is really app forward slash scripts right same with scripts main and then once we set this require JS here with this data main that says consider scripts main to be the main configuration file for um, uh, for, for require JS so everything will load from their relative and so here we're saying relative to where scripts main is <laughs> we can go down into vendor and pick up jQuery and whatnot and then my lib is just in this is going to be in the same directory and in fact, well before we do this let me I think I've got the documentation open up for require.js and let's just real quickly this is the, the API section real quickly just to get an understanding you can see that here they advise us to do just this data main equals scripts main so yeoman's giving us you know idiomatic setup here um, we just need to, to fill in the blank sort of so um, and in their example they say in your index HTML you would point data main to uh, JS app JS in our case it's scripts main and then in app JS and kind of convert this over to main JS in our case you'll configure your paths and your base URL and things like that so with that in mind um, we know um, let's look at one other thing when you define a module um, you can define an object literal like this or you can define a function like this now the the key here is we have a, a module this is a required JS module with no um, dependencies if we have dependencies we simply stick them in here as the first argument but everything else is the same this is our function our function module um, and that's just a real high level and we want to keep that in mind as we work with this stuff so um, so back into main JS we're pointing to my lib it doesn't exist yet let's create it so we'll do my lib.js and as I just mentioned we have a module with no dependencies so that gets that empty array notation we're going to create a lib we're going to say lib equals an empty function okay and we're going to say well we're going to define something on the prototype but let's just say return lib and that's all we have to do we have some warnings we can I'm using JS hint so this is these are actually warnings in sublime text because I've loaded the JS hint package um, you might not have these but I'm going to quickly set some of these guys to true define is a global um, and I think that's all I need for now probably need to use strict so if I say use strict I've opted in for that you don't have to so there we go we don't have any more of these warnings so that's our module my lib and if we go back into main JS what is it complaining about okay I've mixed spaces and tabs there do you like that better cool okay so my lib is now going to be a module available to all required JS to all other required JS modules and it's going to look for it in the current directory as my lib and there it is right and again um, when we look at our index um, our index and test we've set up scripts main to be sort of the entry point uh, everything's going to load after that um, and that's why we can point directly to the same directory and in turn we can in our index HTML page point to require JS and scripts main because scripts is just below app which yeoman um, app and, and test are on the root path for 
for Yeoman, as I understand it. Okay, so now we have this guy set up correctly. We want to require um, these modules. So remember, we use define to define a module, right, with that syntax. Now we want to require these guys. So it's the same idea, but sort of more like an import. First thing we want to require is our spec, which we don't have yet, but we'll call this um, mylib, mylib spec, or let's just say mylib spec. You don't need the JS part. And then function. Right, and the idea is that um, the idea is that uh, require.js is going to load this guy, and, uh, and once he's loaded mylib spec, this function will execute. So we're uh, sort of getting our dependencies straight. So once that's loaded, remember we had a, a, a script source for for our uh, Mocha runner in here that has the Mocha run to kick kick the whole thing off. We want that to be our last require. And that's up a directory in runner. Okay, right. So once we require this guy, everything should fire off because that's going to hit that Mocha run for us, right? So we'll we'll include this guy. Mocha run will happen and our and our test should fire off. So we did I put my spec yet? We don't have our spec yet. And this is a lot of uh, setup before we know we've got this right. So that's why I think. It's worthwhile to come over here to my repo and maybe just check this out for reference. Um, I could have put it as a gist, but decided to just put it as a full-blown um, repo. Anyway, so um, I've seen some variants where they do a set timeout here, like this, and then they do the require, you know, Mocha runner, but. That's pretty ugly because, um, I mean, we're using Re require.js to hopefully avoid that kind of stuff. And in my tests, I didn't need to do that, so I'm omitting it. Um, oh, we want to just change this slightly. As I can see from my cheat sheet over there, we want to say that the UI type is BADD, which means we'll use chai and expect. JS because it can also use should JS assertions and some other styles. So we are opting for BDD style. Okay, so that's good. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Okay, so we need to create our spec, right? So let's create the spec is going to be called mylibspec.js. Okay. And in here, we need to require our system under test, the sort of smart way of saying the thing we're unit testing. Okay, that's an X unit, X unit thing. Anyway, so what did we call that? We called that my lib, right? And this sort of feels kind of magical, like how are we able to do this, right? Well, this is, we've set this up by hopefully correctly um, setting up our require.js. I'm going to belabor this point. So in here, we said, you know, our data main is scripts main. Here's our scripts main. Our scripts main, in turn, is setting up the paths and, and basically saying this is a module we're going to use. And here's our module. We define the module and we hopefully did everything correct here. And so finally, back in our spec over here, we can actually use it, 